So here I have the new M4 iPad Pro with the new Magic Keyboard and here I have the M2 iPad Pro with the old uh, Magic Keyboard. So these are both 11 inch devices. So for those of you who are looking for that 11 inch video, this is it. So let me go ahead and show you guys some of the differences between these two keyboards because there are actually quite a few differences um, in terms of the build quality and a couple more features that we'll get into. And uh, I'll just show you guys around the new keyboard. So this year I decided to go for the white one. Uh, by the way, uh, one of my uh, viewers wanted me to review this, so this is for you. So this is the white one compared to, let me go ahead and get this one compared to the black one. I feel like the black one shows a little more, like, um, a little bit more use than the white one will. Uh, of course, you know, you know, it might get a little bit more dirty in terms of uh, fingerprints and everything. If you're having some, you know, KFC chicken fingers, you're rubbing it around, you might see it. But in terms of like fingerprints, this one is definitely um, much more noticeable. So right off the bat, we do see exposed aluminum rather than uh, it's kind of covered with this little layer of rubber. So this year it's exposed, as you guys can see, the two uh, pass-through charging. So I, I don't know why Apple decided to go with the exposed aluminum rather than just covering it up, because this is 100% going to get scratched up in your backpack, in your uh, gym bag, in your travel bag, any bag that you put this in, it's going to eventually get scratched up, which might ruin the resale value, especially now that Apple might be changing out these keyboard cases every single year or every single uh, iPad update. And, you know making you buy a whole new one so that's something to think about but uh, the feel of it is pretty thin of course there's this uh, plastic layer in here that I'm gonna take off right now let's go ahead and open this thing up uh, we don't need that so here we go the new magic keyboard white I actually really like the white one to be honest let me go ahead and open up the black one and uh, as you guys can see, it's going to show some use. Again, the black color might look a little bit more pleasing, but uh, in terms of like your the oils from your hands, it's definitely going to be a lot more noticeable on the black compared to on the white. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, so far, yeah, there we go. Look at the trackpad. The trackpad seems to be maybe ever so slightly bigger on the new one compared to the old one, which was great because this one, it's very usable, but... It, you, you, it's, it's very limited in space. The, this new one looks a little bit bigger, unless my eyes are maybe tricking me. I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely bigger, right? I'm, I'm not going crazy. Now, in terms of the actual uh, angle that it turns on, it seems to be identical. I'm putting these all together. These are both at the exact angle um, in terms of this angle. This angle is a little bit different, but that's just, I guess, due to the redesign. In fact, do I even have this open all the way? Yeah, so... Yeah, it's open all the way. This one seems to be a more of a 90 degree angle and this one kind of angles inward and then outward for some reason. I actually just noticed that. That's a little bit weird, but there we go. Now, in terms of the thickness, I would say they are pretty much identical. Yeah, they're exactly identical, so no worries there. Uh, of course, we do get that nice cold aluminum touch on the new Magic Keyboard. The, uh, the trackpad is glass this time around and I don't know if you guys could tell, but I can't click on it until the iPad actually connects. So this is the new Force, uh, force Touch trackpad. There's no actual buttons in here compared to the old one where you actually have that, that clicky button. So uh, this is similar to, well, actually this is identical to the MacBook Pros and the MacBooks, or pretty much, you know, Apple computers, even their own trackpads. Yeah, so this is definitely nice. Um, is it worth $340 with tax? I don't know. But more new things. Again, there's a lot of new things in this keyboard. I, I would actually argue this keyboard from that generation to this generation changed more than the iPad itself, which is kind of funny. But here we have the actual function row. Thank God. Thank you so much for that. Here we get the number key, no function row on top. So here you can obviously change the brightness, uh, the, the search, the voice. Uh, the 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 do not disturb all your media controls over here the volume uh, the lock basically it's a MacBook you know it's a MacBook uh, keyboard there we go 
So the second you plug in your M4 powered iPad, now listen to the uh, the trackpad. You guys can, can't hear that, but it is actually clicking now, as opposed to if the iPad is off. So there is that maybe that, that smart connection uh, that's talking to these two devices. Overall, let's go ahead and close it up. We'll test the thickness of this new generation compared to this old generation. So there we go. And it seems to be quite similar. You're just really getting the difference of the actual thinner iPad compared to the older generation. But in terms of the keyboards, they are, they're, they're identical. Uh, the, nothing to be really, um, no change. Except I do find this to be interesting, the placement of the, of the chargers. This one is uh, vertical, this one is horizontal. But whenever you open them up, they're both horizontal, so keep that in mind. But yeah, man, I really like this white one. I think the contrast of the of the dark aluminum and the white kind of looks pretty sick together. Yeah. So let's check out the typing experience. Let's see if there's a difference in the way these uh, new keyboards type compared to the old old style. So let me go ahead and open up the notes application. So I'm just gonna be typing something random. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys listen to the actual keys. And then on the new one, yeah, it seems to be identical. I don't think there's any difference there. So, but I really want to show you guys the new, uh, so this new, uh, the, the function row key. So for example, if I click do not disturb, you'll see it pop up on the corner over there. So I'm going to click on it. Boom, it popped up. Click on it again. It goes down. Let me go ahead and change the volume. So I can't believe it took Apple this long to actually give us volume controls on the keyboard. It seems like a very obvious thing to do, but they never did it except now. Um, here we get the volume, oh, I'm sorry, the brightness level over here, uh, the search, I was looking up a note, so there we go, quick access to the search. So this keyboard is a lot more hands off the iPad and more on the keyboard itself, which is kind of what a keyboard is supposed to be. Um, I really like this, it feels very, very rigid, man. I mean, this thing, I mean, yeah, it's aluminum, but I can't even bend it. Yeah, man. No, this is, this is a very, very tough keyboard. You're... It, it's definitely not going to bend. So, you know, is, is it worth $340 with tax or even more if you live in a country where Apple products are very, very expensive? I, I don't know, man. There's a lot of new things with this keyboard, definitely. And if you want the best possible keyboard for your iPad, I would probably go for this one, especially because, of course, the. And by the way, the keys light up on both of the devices. And let me let me actually try that out. That's one thing I did not test. So let me go ahead and turn off my light, and we'll compare the way the the light lights up the keys, because I think this one is supposed to be a little bit better. So here we go. This is the old, or I'm sorry, this is the new. This is the uh, old one. Let's let's check out that light bleed. So light, the light bleed seems to be very very minimal on this. Yeah, seems to be lighting up really good with the old one. This new one, I'm not sure if it's because of the color white, but there seems to be a little bit more color bleed or uh, the light bleed around the keys. Uh, but let me know which one you guys prefer the uh, the most. I actually kind of like the way the white one looks. I don't know, maybe it's just because this is actually white a white keyboard, but I like the way it lights up the keys on this new edition over here. Yeah, you know what? I'll, I prefer this one, but let me know what you guys, uh, which one you guys choose. So back to what I was saying, if you guys are looking for the best of the best keyboard for your for your iPad, of course, you can't really get better than a first party product. Uh, there are some cheaper alternatives out there, definitely, but they're, you know, they might be more flimsy. They're definitely not going to be made from aluminum or at least the quality of aluminum that is on uh, that is on here. It's not going to have that same force uh, touch trackpad. So there's pros and cons to everything. Of course, if you want the best of the best, you got to pay that Apple tax, 300 bucks. That's a tough pill to swallow. I believe me, guys. I know, but you know, there you go. That that that's the kind of that's the, that's the choice you have. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, definitely click that like button. It really helps the channel out, and it's absolutely free to you. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. This was Mark from Mark's Tech. Adios.